Okay, um, so this workshop is about um, Fourier restriction uh, and related topics. Uh, in particular, what I'm going to do in this talk is to discuss um, some application of uh, the coupling inequalities uh, on discrete harmonic analysis. Um, more precisely, what I am going to discuss um, is uh, some recent results about help improving inequalities for discrete averaging operators. So the starting point is this object, um, which is probably the most simple uh, or elementary uh, averaging operators that we may consider in the discrete setting. Uh, for any function from the integers to R, we define ARF in this way. Um, uh, using the triangular inequality, we can see that this inequality holds. Uh, so in, in some sense, uh, we can say that uh, the, uh, this averaging operator has a regularizing effect, right? We may also consider the corresponding maximal function, which is defined as the supremum over all the average around a certain point n. Um, since we have the, since uh, it is um, very easy to establish this inequality, um, we may wonder whether or not this inequality still holds when we replace this uh, average by the, the maximal function. Um, that this is still an open question. Um, it is not to be uh, true for a very large constant. However, um, it is believed to be true with constant c equal to one. Okay, so this is a conjecture. So we can see that even in this very um, simple uh, situation, uh, there are already some uh, interesting open questions. Uh, let me mention that the, if we consider some no centered uh, average instead of centered average, then uh, this result is known to be true. That was established uh, by Jonathan Bover, Emmanuel Carneiro, Kevin Hughes, and Lillian Pierce. Um, in fact, also a weaker version of this conjecture was one of the uh, results of my PhD thesis. Um, okay, so um, the object that I would like to discuss, uh, that I would like to analyze uh, is um, generalization of this uh, type of uh, discrete averaging operators. Um, and uh, more, more precisely, or uh, to be more specific, this is the object that I am going to uh, discuss in today's lecture. So basically what uh, we are going to do is to uh, consider um, discrete average along polynomials. In the particular situation, when P is a linear polynomial, we are basically, uh, th that will be basically the previous situation that I just mentioned, that I just described. Uh, okay, so since we have, uh, once we have this average, we may also consider the corresponding maximal function, which, uh, which is defined as the supremum, right? Um, this object was studied by uh, John Burga. He uh, proved, he established the boundedness uh, of this maximal uh, operator from little LQ to little LQ for any Q larger than one. Um, using that result by Burga um, and some uh, elementary uh, observations, we, can, we obtain this chain of inequalities. Uh, more precisely, the fixed inequality uh, is just follows just because the maximal function is defined as the supremum of the average. The uh, last one is just uh, the well-known relation between little LP, the little uh, LP norm and the little LQ norm. Whenever Q is larger than P, this inequality holds. And the middle one is precisely the uh, Burga abundance result that I just mentioned. Okay, um, we we may expect to. Uh, if we, if we go um, for a fixed capital N, uh, if we think for a moment, it is kind of natural to expect that we can uh, obtain a better constant, right? Uh, maybe some constant depending on capital N. Uh, and if we consider typical examples like a uh, characteristic function of some nice sets or uh, Dirac deltas, uh, we can see that uh, the best that we can hope is this inequality. So this is the best power that we can uh, get. Um, so this is what we were, what we wanted to prove. In uh, and we were able to establish this uh, type of inequalities 
uh, under uh, certain conditions. Uh, this was basically uh, the problem that we study uh, in a joint work with um, some mathematicians from Georgia Tech, to be more precise, uh, uh, Rui Han, uh, Michael Lacey, Fan Jan, and Bijek Kukovac from the uh, University of Zagreb. Um, okay, so our main result in the quadratic situation uh, was precisely that the uh, design inequality holds uh, whenever P and Q satisfies these conditions. All these conditions, they um, to see that these conditions are really necessary, we can con we can consider typical uh, examples. Um, but in fact, um, in, in the quadratic situation, we can see that uh, this is uh, also optimal. Um, to, to, to make things easier to visualize, we can uh, consider the particular situation when Q is the holder dual of P. Uh, so when, if Q is the holder dual of P, um, the range that we obtain uh, is this one. So P between three half and two, and that range is optimal. Um, okay. Uh, be aware that uh, this bound that we obtain um, depends not only on the grade of the polynomial, uh, but also on the coefficient. So uh, an interesting question will be uh, try to obtain some bounds that depends only on the degree. Um, okay, so let me also mention that uh, the argument or our strategy for uh, higher degree polynomials is um, completely different than the strategy that we follow uh, to deal with quadratic polynomials. Um, in the quadratic uh, situation, uh, basically what we do is uh, after some elementary observations, we reduce the problem to consider this particular polynomial P of X equal to X squared. Um, then we, one of the novelties in the quadratic situation is that we uh, observe that there is a close relation between uh, this uh, discrete polynomial average and discrete fractional integral operators. And then we can uh, use the uh, hardly literal circle method to uh, obtain bounds for this discrete fraction, fractional integral operator. Uh, this, this type of object was already studied in the past by uh, Maria Stein and Wenger. Um, in fact, um, if we are able to obtain uh, better bounds for these objects, uh, then we, we may be also able to uh, improve our range in the higher degree situation. However, that seems to be a very complicated problem. Okay, in the higher uh, degree situation, this, is our main, this was our main uh, theorem. Um, so the desired inequality, so for this uh, discrete polynomial average, uh, the desired inequality holds. Uh, whenever uh, P and Q satisfies these conditions. Once again, all these conditions uh, are necessary to see that um, we may consider typical examples. Um, in the uh, particular situa situation when Q is the holder dual of P, this range uh, is just uh, this. Um, as we will see soon, uh, this is not as with uh, this is not necessarily the optimal range. Uh, so we obtain uh, an optimal results in, in terms of magnitude. So this is the best power that we can get. Uh, however, uh, we don't know what is the optimal range, okay? So uh, finding the optimal range will be a very interesting uh, uh, result. Um, okay. I will come back to that later, uh, but before uh, I will try to explain also um, some of the uh, main ideas in order, to, in order to establish this theorem. Um, but before doing that, let me mention that, uh, that uh, this theorem uh, was one of the um, tools uh, used by Ben Krauss, Marius Mireg, and Terry Tao to obtain bounds uh, for bilinear polynomial uh, ergodic average uh, of this type. Um, in fact, in that uh, paper, there is a collection of open questions related with this uh, type of problem. Uh, in particular, the main uh, question is uh, to try to establish a similar bond and result for bilinear, uh, for this bilinear uh, operator uh, whenever you, go in, in the general situation, because the, the bounds, uh, the bound and result that they obtain assume that one of the polynomials has to be linear. Okay, so um, that, that's probably the main uh, question. If you consider the 
this type of average, uh, and you analyze and you you try to obtain bounds for the corresponding uh, bilinear maximal function uh, in the in the general situation. So that will be uh, definitely a, a, a super interesting result. Okay. Um, so let me let me try to describe. Um, the strategy in order to establish uh, our main bondedness result uh, in the higher de degree situation. So in order to do that, let me um, say a few words about uh, the Vinograd of value conjecture. This is a well-known problem um, in number theory and also in analysis. Um, basically, uh, you consider uh, this system of polynomial equations, and you would like to uh, obtain nice upper bounds for the number of uh, integer solutions for this system. Um, okay, so it is, uh, it, it's not hard to see that this is a lower bound. Uh, this diffuse term uh, comes from the uh, diagonal solution. So when x1 is equal to xt plus one, x2 equal, equal to xt plus two, and so on, xt equal to x2t. Uh, in the second term uh, comes from a probabilistic argument, uh, basically because uh, since we are assuming that each of these variables um, is uh, at least one and at most n, then for each of them we have n possibilities. So uh, that uh, gives n to the two, n to the power two times the uh, possibilities. Uh, but um, the probability uh, for each of these equations, the probability. Uh, uh, is uh, one over n to the i. Uh, so if we multiply those and we use the Gauss uh, formula, uh, we obtain this uh, other power, okay? Uh, so that's the heuristic, but that can be formalized. Okay, so um, it was proved um, like five years ago, more or less, by uh, Burgan, Demeter, and Good that uh, in fact, there are not many more solutions than this. Uh, this is a famous result. Um, it was previously established by Trevor Woolley uh, in the case when d is equal to three using uh, efficient congressing, which is a more number theoretic method. Uh, then in full generality, this was established by uh, Burgard and Metering Good uh, in 2015. Uh, and um, it, it is possible also uh, to establish this result using uh, efficient congressing that was also um, proved by Trevor Woolley. Um, so, so some key ingredient, some key observation is uh, that the number of solutions um, for that system of polynomial equations satisfies uh, this identity. So, so we have this uh, analytic representation. Uh, and then we only need to take care about this uh, Gaussian zoom, this exponential zoom, right? Okay. Um, so, um, the, the, this result by Burgard, Demeter, and Good um, can be written also in this way. Whenever s is whenever uh, s is larger than d times d plus one, uh, this inequality holds. And in fact, um, using the hardy little good circle method, it is possible to remove this epsilon loss in this uh, situation. Um, okay, so let's keep in mind that we have this bound. Uh, here as n is this uh, average. Um, so we have a sum of exponential function and we take the average that is as n. So uh, this is going to be fundamental in order to establish our bonded result for discrete polynomial average in the higher degree situation. Um, okay, uh, in order to establish our bond and our uh, main theorem, uh, we, we introduce this auxiliary average operator um, along the moment curve. So this is this uh, average is defined in, uh, in higher the, in uh, dimension D, um, in higher dimension. Um, and the object that um, we uh, are originally analyzing uh, is a one dimensional object, right? So we are considering discrete polynomial average uh, in dimension one, right? Um, okay, so what we are going to do is to um, obtain bounds for this uh, average operator along the moment cure. And then uh, we will somehow uh, project um, what we, uh, those results from dimension D to dimension one uh, in a convenient way in order to obtain bounds for um, a, 
discrete polynomial average in dimension one alone a polynomial with degree equal to D. Okay, so that's basically the idea. So um, if we consider typical examples, once again, we can see that um, this is basically uh, what we can expect. So the, this inequality is the expected inequality. Um, and in fact, we are able to establish this uh, bound uh, for any uh, couple PQ that satisfies the same conditions that I mentioned before. That's not so important. Um, and and th those conditions, they come from typical examples, once again. Um, okay, let me explain how, how to get this type of inequality. Um, the, 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 the proof is not so complicated. Basically, you can use Fourier inversion formula to say that this identity holds. Then you can uh, manipulate what you have in the right-hand side in order to uh, make this term as n appear. Uh, then you can use hausdorff jahn for the inequality and hausdorff jahn once again. So you obtain this chain of inequalities. So in order uh, to obtain uh, some uh, LP improving result, you only need uh, it, it will be enough to have nice bounds for the LS norm of SN, but that's precisely what we have because of Burgan, uh, Demeter, and Good result. Let me also mention that bounds for, uh, if instead of the moment cure you consider the paraboloid, um, then uh, it, it is also interesting to uh, analyze what happened. So, what, what will be uh, the LP improving, uh, the corresponding LP improving result? And that was. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, that was, th th there is uh, a result by uh, Ciprian Demeter um, and two other mathematicians from Indiana. Uh, they established precisely uh, some similar LP improving uh, bounds uh, along the paraboloid. Um, okay. Let me mention also that this short argument is in fact, um, almost optimal uh, in the sense that, um, so we have seen, we can see that this uh, condition is sufficient and this condition is necessary. So this is really almost optimal. Uh, however, our main result, um, it, the gap uh, left in our main result uh, is a little bit larger, right? So, so we can see that this is a necessary condition and we can see that this is a sufficient condition uh, we don't know what is the optimal range. That, that is definitely a very interesting question that we may consider. Okay, so once we know, uh, once we have those uh, nice bounds for uh, the um, average operator along the moment cure, uh, then we are in a good position to obtain bounds for this uh, object, for this average operator along uh, some polynomial p with degree equal to d. Uh, and the idea is just uh, the following. So for any function g from the integers to r, what we would like to do is to, um, to obtain an inequality like this, right? Uh, okay, so uh, in order to do that, uh, what we do is to build a, a function f uh, from cd to r such that these two inequalities hold. Because if we are able to do that, uh, combining these two inequalities and the bound, uh, the bound that uh, we mentioned before for this uh, average operator along the moment cure, combining these two inequalities and that bound, we can uh, immediately obtain this bound. Okay, so uh, so in order to conclude, we for any g from C to R. Uh, it's enough to find some function f from cd to r so that these two inequalities hold, okay? Uh, so the question is how to uh, build or how to define f, and uh, what we do is we define f in this way. Uh, in some sense, you may think that uh, g is the projection of f, uh, but more precisely, this is the definition of f. Uh, the fixed inequality, with that definition, uh, the fixed inequality follows uh, immediately, the second is more technical. Um, if uh, you would like more details, I can say a few more words about that uh, later, but um, uh, that, that's all what I wanted to say. Um, so maybe this is a good moment to stop. <laughs>